Hi. Shoes that I'm going to give you are these trainers. I just bought a new pair, so they lasted me about just over a year. And I bought them because they're the kind of just shoes I wear every day. Maybe not in the winter when like you have to wear things that keep the water out. But um, I wear them so that every day, just like walking, but also if I'm doing some exercise, I, I just use this one pair of shoes. So they are my... Or if I'm going somewhere more smart, I have to put something a bit more smart. But generally, there's like I try to do the min have the minimum shoe <laughs> shoes I can. Yeah. Uh, so Vancouver. Yeah, Vancouver. That's the furthest away. Well, I went to a conference there. When I'm packing to travel, I don't I don't want to I want to pack the minimum. And my feet are really big, so if I carry if I have it, and I, everywhere I go, I try and do some exercise, you know, as well. So like if I can just have one pair of shoes on my feet and I can get all my clothes in the one bag and that's it. The conference was about Paolo Freire, this Brazilian inspiring educator and somebody who uh, stood for and developed like really, you know, democratic. Um, he believed that, you know, education, like many people, education was the way for a better world and emancipation but it has to be through a dialogue, it has to challenge. He says education is never neutral, it's always supporting the status quo or challenging it. And, uh, and so the, <clears throat> the status quo education is usually hierarchical and monological and so this should be dialogical, it should be a, a conversation. And uh, unfortunately the conference was not a conversation. So that was quite sad. It was about a lot of people standing up and giving a monologue. Often giving a monologue saying how important dialogue is. So it was a bit frustrating. I'm so lucky, like when I tie my shoelaces up uh, in the morning, usually like also I'm tying up the shoelaces of another, at least one other person, a small person, so I've got young children. Although they usually either do I don't have laces, <laughs> or they do it themselves now. But um, I usually, nearly every day, I'm looking forward to something, and that's not that's a wonderful thing to say. You know, I've, I've got a healthy, strong body. The, the I can I can use my body to walk easily and cycle my bike and uh, navigate the city, and uh, I have enough money uh, not to you worried, like, you know, it's a, it's a bit worried at the moment where, like, my career is going, like, I don't know how I'm going to earn the income, but, you know, at the end, at the bottom, I know it's going to be okay, and that's the thing, the most, or many, many other people, they can't say that. Oh, you know, the thing that I'm worried about so much, and I feel it now, and I don't know whether it's, like, uh, actual or in my head, well, I know it's actual, but it's the air, it's the air pollution, I can taste it, I can feel it in my throat, like, sometimes I feel like, you know, it's that, when you had like a cigarette or something like that, you know. The air in Oxford I know is really bad, and, it, and air pollution is a big killer, so I worry for my children, not just my children, but all children. So, that there are places in Oxford that, you know, some people, they just diff never go, you know, like, it's not a big place, it's tiny, you can cycle from the west here, to the east in like 20 minutes, like, but uh, really it's just, you know, different worlds, like where we were in, Black in Blackbird Leeds, like some people, they hardly ever go into the town, because so, even the bus is too expensive, then other people are like in uh, the colleges, and like, well, I have, you know, seen that world because I was in the university, you know, and they never leave that one, you know, and so it is perhaps, there's many extreme places in the world now, but Oxford is so beautiful, you know, these colleges are so beautiful and uh, for all the history of the colleges, there's a reason why they build the high walls, you know. Well, maybe not literally in their shoes, but um, I think that, like, I'm trying to be empathetic, to use empathy, which is obviously to mean to try to see it from another person's perspective. So, um, we're trapped in this kind of false ego thing that is, makes it difficult. The only way to do it is just to like listen to other people <laughs> and really, really try and listen to them and that.
time. So I think that that's a skill, and I'm trying to, you, you know, like any skill, you have to practice and practice. The Oxford Rugby Brothers was just one thing, like. Um, was it your idea? Yeah, yeah. It was all like, mm, I mean, what happened was, uh, like before that, I'd done lot, tried to do lots of different community education things, and then. Um, it was the general election last year, and then uh, so I went to this. They call it hustings. It's like when the, all the candidates for this for that area are on the stage, and the people in the audience ask the questions. You know? And it was uh, near here, and it was like 200 people, and in this small church, maybe around 200. And it was like so frustrating. Like the, the questions were chosen beforehand, so and they they were like about. Not, none of the big issues, like, you know, like, if you'd have heard the questions, you would never imagine that there was people in Oxford that were hungry and didn't have a house and, you know, um, didn't, you know, whatever, nothing about the environment or air pollution or anything. So I came up really angry, so I thought, well, I'm going to do an event at the community centre near here, and I would call it, the night before the election, and call it what would a real democracy be like and how can we start to build it? And about 40 people came. It was a very diverse group of people. Very, very diverse. And um, I just got people talking, really. Did some exercises, asked them about what they think about the word democracy, what they feel, and get them to thinking what kind of issues would they like to discuss and that. And then out of that, this group came about and um, it's been about 10 or 12 people meeting every month. We all, all human beings need the same material, physical things. We all need food in our bellies, we all need water, we need shelter, we need warmth. But actually, uh, really we need, we need more than that. You know, we are social creatures, we are spiritual creatures. We need friendship, we need understanding, we need recognition, we need love. We need um, physical... Uh, physical, sens sen sensual, uh, yeah, touching with other human beings, we need, we need cuddles and hugs, we need uh, uh, opportunities to s satisfy our creative uh, 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 energies, all of these things are there, of course you can survive without a cuddle, you can survive without, um, uh, you know, having to, you, you know, doing a shit job or no job, but you can survive. But you can you live, you know, to be fully alive and to be fully human? I don't think so. So uh, all of these things we need. Yeah. So this is the idea of the market. You can move freely, but of course, like, can you move freely? So yes, compared to like Chinese, uh, what do you call it? Like the hukou, I think it's called system, where you actually like it's relaxed a bit more, but still like you need permission to move from one place to another. Of course, it's not so bad in other places. Uh, if you're a woman in Saudi Arabia or something like that, uh, you know, if you're, uh, but then not always the walls are physical, you know, uh, whether it's like because you're in a, a wheelchair and the city is not designed to allow you to move around the city, uh, or whether it's just simply uh, uh, you know that if you don't you don't go there, if you're a black person you don't go there, or if you're a white person you don't go there, or something like that. Um, but also it's just obviously access to money. In this country it's ridiculously expensive to jump on it, to go on a train, uh, or to even go on a bus. Like, so this idea, oh you're free to go anywhere, like I think it's actually, you're free to, uh, uh, to do it if you have, have the money. So more and more things, access to all these things depends not on your humanity, but on your income or your not even income, your wealth. It's better to be like here than in yeah in many countries. You can say in North Korea or um, Syria right now, of course. But many many countries, you, of course, like. Um, but it, actually, in, you can you, when you think about moving, you think about geographical movement. But the liberals like to talk about social mobility. I don't like this social mobility, like this idea that you know you can come from the bottom to the top in your society, like that. And they say social mobility has never been so low. Actually, I don't like social mobility because it's like this idea that oh, some of the poor people can get out and leave the other poor people in the in the crap. No, we should get rid of all, 
or poverty. I have my way of going through life. Just, it's really, I'm very lucky, like, so all of the things I say that now is because of many fortunate situ uh, conditions that, you know, came about. But my way of going through life is just like, it's open, I'm trying to open everything, my eyes, my heart, my mind. I think about it, so open-hearted, it's like hope, open eyes, it's like trying to understand what is going on, open soul, even like trying to understand what is reality and open mind is like being like a, open to new ideas and new, new thoughts but also critical of the world as I see it, you know, critically open, you know, rather not, not believing. <laughs> this is my life though, this is me, I mean this is like, this is it, this is, the, this is authentic, so the baked beans are cooking in the microwave, the things are warming up in the oven, like this is it, so. I've got, yes, I've got a big feet and I'm, you'll probably fall over. Direction is good, so I'm just going to keep going. And, um, yeah, I'm very hopeful, I'm very hopeful of that. And I think, like, the, what I'm trying to do is, is the thing that, like, even in a, if it's a room in, with just ten people, it just feels like, oh, what is this? But actually, it's the most important thing, because we all stick of this system and that system, but the system is a system of relationships. It's a system of relations between people. So we have to change the relations. So even when we're in a room, we're doing something very special. We're talking in, in new ways. We're listening to each other. Like, so this is actually the most important work. So some people think this is like not realistic. You know, we're being realistic is like uh, whatever, I don't know, like uh, voting in a referendum or something. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I think like it's really important. Everything we try to do is change relationships with ourselves, with each other, with nature. So, um, I've got the same pairs of shoes, or same new pair of shoes really, and I just keep walking in the same way.